A fantasy had been planning for retirement for a long time. But they couldn't find a replacement for him. There were no people left, let alone workers worthy of replacing him after so many years. He had been working in these local areas as a gamekeeper. Afanasy Andreevich, or simply Grandfather Afan, was already 72 years old, a full eight decades, and it was truly time for him to settle down, sit at home by a warm stove, eat porridge with milk. Yet, he kept running through the taiga. It's a good thing he had good health to run around. Siberian Health Since childhood, Afanasy Andreevich had been in the taiga, in the fresh air, which contributed to his good health. Although his eyesight was not as sharp anymore. When will you calm down, old fool, grumbled his wife, rattling the tongs skillfully in the Russian stove. Your peers have long been lying on the stove, warming their old bones. And you keep wandering through the forests. And you can't argue with her. Indeed, on the one hand, it seemed good to stay at home, but on the other hand, without movement, one could die prematurely, and from boredom as well. That's what he pondered to himself, an old dreamer. And as luck would have it, the chairman kept insisting, do some work. Yes, work a little more. No one wants to be a gamekeeper in our remote village, he heard from his boss every year for the past five years. But the gamekeeper didn't resist much. He understood perfectly well that he couldn't stay at home. Whose bread he ate, such was his nature. It drew him to the forest, he couldn't live without it, couldn't breathe. That's how an old hunter is. So, he would sit and think for another evening. A fantasy Andreevich, secretly from his wife, would agree to work a little, and then worry that his wife would find out and start scolding and quarreling again. But he was used to defending himself from her. Just for one year, he repeated to himself each time. And to the chairman, he said with a smirk, just for a year, Ilya Petrovich, my legs can't walk much. It's especially difficult in winter through the deep snow. I agree to everything, Ilya Petrovich chuckled in response. Just for a year, Andreevich. You're not the same, it's hard to walk, especially kilometers. Especially in deep snow in winter. A fantasy, the old gamekeeper, would agree to everything, and then he would leave for the taiga, living there for weeks in his forest hut, still a young and strong man. He built it together with his brother so that he would have a place to spend the night in the taiga, a shelter in the forest to escape bad weather. His brother had been gone for a long time, but the little hut still stood, serving as his home for many years. He also had a small vegetable garden, a bathhouse, and a barn. A whole little farm. Another winter has come to an end. This year, spring seemed to arrive early. There were still some frosty days, but the sun was already shining brightly. A fantasy Andreevich brewed himself a fragrant herbal tea, had a hearty breakfast, and prepared for a challenging day ahead. He needed to carry out his weekly inspection of his properties, which meant he wouldn't be returning home soon. The old gamekeeper walked through the beginning of the forest, checking if all the trees were in place. Then he crossed a wooden bridge to the other side and wandered along the neighboring bank. Everything was clean, with no signs of any tracks or traps. Satisfied, he decided to head back home. The man stood on the bridge and remembered how every year he asked Ilya Petrovich to repair it or, at the very least, provide some people to help reinforce the structure. It was becoming uneven, and he feared it would collapse soon, possibly causing harm to someone. God forbid. So the old gamekeeper stood on the bridge, gazing into the distance. He squinted his eyes and finally discerned a reddish spot on the ice. His eyesight was not as good as before, and it took him a moment to realize what it was. A lynx cub was floating down the river on a slow-moving ice flow, like a liner. When it reached the gamekeeper, the old man immediately understood what the spot was and gasped in astonishment. Running back and forth on the ice, the cub cried out loudly, instinctively trying to find a way to safety. Oh, what a disaster. It will drown, thought the gamekeeper. He couldn't just stand on solid ground and watch the young lynx perish. 
They were magnificent creatures, and there were already so few of them in these forests. No, he had to do something. Without wasting a second, the old gamekeeper quickly retrieved a rope from his backpack. He tied one end to the nearest birch tree and wrapped the other end around his waist, checking the knots on both sides. Without hesitation, he jumped onto the ice to save the poor animal. Leaping from one side to the other, he tried to reach the stranded lynx as quickly as possible. Thank God the gamekeeper arrived just in time. He grabbed the distressed creature and swiftly, with light jumps, made his way back to the shore. Thankfully, the ice was solid enough to withstand their weight, and within a few minutes, they were safely on land. Afanasy Andreevich held the lynx close to him, and they made their way to the forest hut. There, the man quickly lit the stove for himself, brewed tea, and added the bomb he made himself, infused with herbs to prevent any illness. His feet were quite wet from jumping through the melting snow. The lynx received a piece of meat and a bowl of milk with bread. The little one growled over the bone for a while, occasionally glancing sideways at his savior. Then, after drying off near the warm stove, he fell asleep on a bedding. Several months later, the predator had grown and thrived on domestic food, and Afanasy Andreevich decided it was time to release him into the wild. It was not right for the wild animal to live in domestic conditions. Before parting ways, the lynx spent a long time sitting at the feet of Afanasy Andreevich, rubbing his head against the old man's sturdy boot as if thanking him for his kindness and care. And most importantly, for saving him. A year has passed since then, and once again, Afanasy Andreevich agreed to work and stayed at his workplace. Early spring was turbulent, with the rivers thawing early. On this day, during his regular rounds, the gamekeeper lingered on the bridge. He stood there, remembering his lynx friend whom he rescued from the icy river last spring. Where was he now, wandering through the taiga, probably, just like the old, liga, enjoying life and spring? Lost in thought, Afanasy Andreevich didn't even notice how gracefully a forest cat approached him from the opposite bank. He was just reminiscing, unaware of such a meeting. The animal instantly pushed off the ground, leaped over the bridge in three jumps, and jumped onto the back of Grandfather of Fantasy, knocking him off his feet and toppling him to the ground. The beasts and the man flew down the bridge towards the shore. As they reached the bank, a terrible crack was heard. The hunter turned around and saw the wooden bridge slowly collapsing with a loud crash into the river. The lynx grew up and became strong, but did not forget its savior. Today was its turn to repay kindness with kindness, and it saved the man from imminent danger. I told the chairman before that this contraption would definitely break down sooner or later. Thank God, the Lord spared me today, so it's not time for me to retire yet. A fantasy Andreevich never retired until his death and continued to work as a hunter. Many young people often believe that all problems can be solved by force. They reign over people's fear and threaten those who oppose them. Today we are going to talk about three of these guys who formed a gang and went to nearby villages to rob innocent people and scare local girls. No one can stand against them and it only makes the group worse. One day, they drove into a small village and got very drunk. They stopped in the center of the village near the church, turned on loud music and continued to drink, terrorizing the locals. Unfortunately, the village is mostly old, so there is no one to stand up to the young, which gives them the confidence to be loud. The Sunday service at the church was coming to an end, and the streets were starting to fill up with people. The gang yelled at the old woman for leaving the church, then their eyes fell on a beautiful young girl with her grandmother. They immediately ran to her and invited her to join them for a drink. She tried to politely decline, then picked up the pace, trying to stay away from the group, but they didn't accept her refusal. A man grabbed her by the arm and dragged her into their car before two others lifted her legs to try and get her in. The girl struggled and screamed, but to no avail, her weakness only drew wild laughter from the men. Just before they pushed the girl into the car, out of nowhere a huge, furry thing lands right on the neck of one of the men. Before he could realize what was happening, he let go of the girl with a cry of pain. 
The animal then bit the other man's hand, causing him to let go of the girl as well, allowing her to run away. As they rolled on the ground, the animal continued to attack the offender, calling for mercy. Then the girl quietly called the beast, and he approached her obediently, sat down at her feet, ready to attack again at any time. Only now did these people see clearly what had attacked them. It was a huge wild cat, a lynx. They dare not get up, for fear that the lynx will attack them again. They begged the girl to let them get in the car and leave. They promised never to appear here again. The girl motioned them away, stroked the lynx's head, and went home with her grandmother. The gang never showed up there again. But the question remains where did the lynx come from? Why protect girls? It all started a few years ago when her grandmother placed an ad in the local paper saying that she wanted to adopt a kitten to deal with the mice that had come to her house. The next day, a local hunter was walking in the forest and came across a bobcat kitten who had apparently become separated from its mother and lost its way. He knew the little bobcat couldn't survive alone in the wild, so he decided to bring it home. When he was thinking about where to hide the lynx, he remembered seeing an advertisement in the newspaper. The advertisement said that a woman wanted to buy a kitten that could catch mice. Why isn't this a kitten that catches mice? The man thought for a while and smiled slyly. When he got to the village, he found the woman and sold the lynx to her. He told her it was a purebred kitten. The old lady had vision problems, her eyesight was very poor, and she couldn't see clearly that it was a wild animal, so she happily bought it. Time passed and the kitten grew up. When he outgrew the size of an average cat, the woman suspected something was wrong. When her granddaughter visited from the city, she immediately recognized her grandmother's new pet as a wild animal. She convinces her grandmother to send him back to the forest because you never know what a beast can do to a person. But the old woman became so attached to him that she flatly refused to do it. The woman and granddaughter took care of the lynx, and the beast was very close to them. He became completely docile and non-aggressive towards people until the day a violent man appeared in their village and threatened the girl. So friends, even wild animals can express their gratitude for being given a good life. Unfortunately, not all of us are able to do this, and sometimes we can learn good deeds from animals. After all, not everyone in our lives gets away with it. We often find happiness in the most unexpected places. When we give up hope, the universe seems to lend a helping hand, and only then can we find true love. Max is a very attractive tall and handsome young man. He held a senior position in a construction company and showed great potential as a specialist. Girls try to get his attention and want to marry him, but Max falls in love with a girl who is only interested in his money. Max dreams of having a family, but that doesn't interest his beloved, so she leaves him for a richer man. Max then fell into a severe depression and even started drinking heavily. His mother was worried about him, so she asked him to go on a trip with her so he could get some rest. He agrees, and joins her on the train out of town. They went to a small village where Max found a job as a railway worker. His duties included driving along the railroad and identifying possible breakdowns. Work is dirty but quiet. One can walk along the tracks all day, breathing in the fresh air and admiring the beauty of the forest. During one such walk, Max spotted a wounded wolf cub. He took him home to take care of him. The little wolf cub grew up and became a beautiful big wolf. Now Max is not so boring because his faithful friend is always with him. The wolf is completely tamed. He is not afraid of people, so he is allowed to work with him. During one of his tours, Max and his wolf hear a loud horn in the distance, indicating an approaching train. Usually when this happened, Max would stay away from the railroad, and the wolf would run into the bushes to avoid the loud noise. But this time, the wolf behaved strangely. He dashed along the tracks, directly toward the oncoming train. Max ran after him, yelling at him to go the other way, but then he saw the wolf pulling something off its track. As he approached, he was shocked by what he saw. It was an unconscious girl. Max rushed at her and pulled her away from the tracks. 
She lay lifeless on the ground, the wolf licking her face and hands. Her pulse was very weak, but she was alive. Max picked her up and took her to his warehouse as fast as he could. There, she received medical attention before she regained consciousness. A few days later, the girl woke up and told her frustrating story. It turned out she had grown up in an orphanage, where she trained as a hairdresser, then got a job in a small beauty salon and rented a room in a hotel. There, she fell in love with one of her clients. He makes her feel like Cinderella, but the fairy tale ends quickly when she finds out she's pregnant. She was very happy that day. She is going to meet her beloved and tell him the good news. But he didn't feel the same way. He told her to get rid of the child, he never wanted to see her again. The girl couldn't believe her ears. She didn't want to lose the fruit of their love, so she went to the forest and left herself there. She wandered the forest for a long time when she realized she was completely lost. It was dark when she reached the railway. She decides to follow these trails, hoping they will lead her to civilization, but then she faints from loss of strength. If it weren't for Max and his wolf, she would have been run over by a train and the story would have ended tragically. But miracles do happen. For the first time since his depression, Max became interested in another girl. Soon he married her, she had a daughter, he adopted her, and they had a son, and then a daughter. They decided to live in that village because they didn't want to lose their happiness in the hustle and bustle of the city. When an elderly woman rescued two motherless bear cubs, she had no idea she would adopt them as pets after years together. She wanted to release the bears back into the wild where they belonged, but they really proved to be pet material in an incredible way when she needed them most. Bonnie Hart was born and raised in Texas where she has lived her entire life, she is known to the people of her town. She is a brave, strong woman who lost her husband many years ago, but refuses to move out of the home they built together because it holds all the treasured memories of Bonnie's husband, Joshua, while he was alive. She has been a truck driver for decades and has done so well, she loves her job so much and refuses to quit. Despite warnings from her children that she is too old to spend hours behind big wheels. They were also concerned that she would be lonely living alone, but aside from her impressive resilience, she never expressed interest in moving in with either of them. And she was also known for her warm personality. Known for her strong love for animals of all kinds, Bonnie is a frequent visitor to the local veterinarian for this reason, as she brings in various injured animals on a weekly basis. She's always on her back for stray dogs and is adored by neighborhood pets, so Bonnie's favorite rescue friend is her own dog, Billy, the German schnauzer. She found Billy badly injured on the side of the road while doing truck deliveries a few years ago. Bonnie took him to the local veterinarian for treatment, he needed a lot of rest to fully recover, Billy needed a lot of rest to fully recover, she volunteered to take him in. Since then they have become best friends. Fortunately, it has returned to health. Looking out her kitchen window one afternoon when she heard excited barking from the backyard, she was surprised to see Billy approaching the house with his two new canine friends, Billy bringing his two new companions. She ran out the back door to get a closer look. But there was no doubt it was a bear. Terrified for her and her dog, Bonnie picked up the phone to call the local animal rescue, and if there's one thing she knows, it's that bear cubs always have a protective mama who always close to them. Billy and his friends didn't pay much attention to these details, although they played happily in the backyard. She had been observing the animals without interfering because she did not want to disturb them. In fact, she didn't know what to do at all, and the cubs looked completely harmless but it looked like they were having a rough few days. They were covered in dirt and scratched, and while they looked innocent, they were still bears. On the phone, animal rescue officials told her they were likely the cubs of a grizzly bear that had been caught in a trap a few days earlier. Unfortunately, 
the mother bear bled to death before help could arrive. Bears are very rare in their area, so her death was very tragic. Bonnie knew that if these cubs returned to the forest, they would not be able to survive on their own, they were small, tired and weak. And looked like they hadn't eaten for days. Her heart breaks for the poor cubs as she wonders if they know their mother is dead. So she decided to try to help them and raise them. The first thing she has to do is try to get them clean. Surprisingly, when she hesitated out onto the lawn with the hose, they didn't cause any trouble. Bear and her dog seem to enjoy being sprayed, and it's like a fun little game for them. Bonnie knew exactly what the cubs liked to eat, and since she and Joshua had a little hunting experience. She made a quick concoction of softened puppy food and fish and served them in a bowl. The two bears became such an important part of Bonnie's family that she named them Ban Ban and Stone, everyone is used to Bonnie adopting many stray dogs but for her the bears were definitely next level. Because Bonnie loves these bears very much, and she is very protective of them. She knew they were still dangerous animals, they were always climbing trees in the backyard, having as much fun as they could, but she didn't trust them not to chase passersby. So she kept watching them and Billy tried to keep up with them. But after living with Bonnie for about four years they have grown from bear cubs to adult bears and Bonnie will not be able to fight them if a dangerous situation arises. This is very scary for many people. Billy had tragically passed away from cancer a few months ago, and it was just her and the bear, and she knew she had to get them out of here as soon as possible. Bonnie was on a long truck trip one day and wasn't feeling well, and when she got home eager to get back to her evening work. She thought it was just fatigue. The next morning, she didn't feel much better than the night before, but she went about her day's work in the afternoon as usual. Bonnie was out in the backyard with the bears, knitting in her favorite recliner on the porch and watching them play together. Climb trees, and push each other. She didn't know what horror was going to happen hours later, and after a while, Bonnie got up and went into the house to take a nap, because she was still not feeling well, she only took a few steps in the direction of the house. When she suddenly fell down and fell hard on the ground. Two bears rushed to her side and tried to nudge her awake, but she did not respond to their touch. They do a truly incredible thing. Ban Ban rushed to the neighbor's house next door, which he was quite familiar with. While Stone sat beside Bonnie and continued to push her. Fortunately, the neighbor, Mr. Miller, was at home and was about to go out when he heard a loud roar coming from the yard. He recognized the sound of a bear and initially feared that the neighbor's pet had become feral and was coming to attack him when he went out the door to face it. He found Ban Ban pacing up and down incessantly, apparently wanting him to follow him as soon as he saw that he had the human's attention. The bear immediately turned and started running home. Mr. Miller hesitates for a second before following it, and when Mr. Miller tails Ban Ban to Bonnie's house, he finds her lying unconscious on the floor with rocks beside her. He immediately called 911 for help, and paramedics arrived shortly after and took the elderly woman to the hospital. Bonnie was treated in the hospital for about a week, and when she finally got home, the bear nearly held her in his arms. Mr. Miller told Bonnie that, thanks to the bear, he had plenty of time to get there for help. The old woman was amazed at their fidelity and decided that she would keep them as long as time allowed. After all, they really became her pets. Now, what do you think about adopting wild animals as pets, let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching.